Hello everybody, how's it going? Carl Screezilla here and I hope you're all well and welcome to this little episode on uh, the Fritz X and how to use it. Now I have done one of these in the past so this is an updated version. Uh, being we actually have ships in the game nowadays, uh, I thought I would redo this one and actually um, actually just redo this and uh, do a little bit of a, uh, a remake of the original so to say. So um fritz x what it is it's a radio radio control guided bomb uh it has a flare on the end of it that's that glowy bit on the end of it uh it's carried by the heinkel he 111h6 and the uh he 177 graph uh, the graph actually carries three of them, the HE 111 carries one of them. Uh, we're just going to take out the HE 111 first of all, so let's just take her out for a test flight. So when we go out to a test flight, just make sure to select the right bombs. Um, there are quite a few different bombs on board for you to choose from, so just make sure to pick the PC1400X, which is of course your Fritz X bomb. Um, the Fritz X has a mass of 50, uh, 1,570 kilograms uh, with 320 kilograms of explosives. It carries Amtal explosives. The main thing about this bomb is it's an armor piercing bomb. It's designed to actually pierce the armor of a ship's hull. So let's go for the test flight. Okay, so first things you want to want to do in test flight is actually take off, of course. Now this can actually be a bit difficult in the HE 111, um, just because the plane is a little bit underpowered and it is quite a heavy bomb. Um, as I say, it is a 1500 kilogram bomb. Uh, it's originally based off the PC uh, 1400, I believe, off the top of my head, uh, which was a dumb bomb version, which also had the nickname of Fritz. Um, the Panzerspreg bomb Silindisch or armor piercing high explosive cylinder bomb um, is well as it says it's an armor piercing bomb and as you can see with the Fritz X it has the fins on there which give it the guidance you can see the actual guidance at the back and you can see those flares there as well the flares will light up so you can see where it's going now in War Thunder we don't have to worry about that we just have to really look at our aim for the bomb um, but the first thing you're going to want to do is, as I say, cut into a test flight and you're going to want to climb. Now, the important thing about Fritz X is you need altitude. So while we're doing that, I'm just going to go over your controls quickly as well. So what we want to do is we want to go to weaponry and we want to go to... Do, 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 where are you? Uh, we want to go to your access for aimed weapons and pitch access for aimed weapons. Now, you can set this however you like. Myself, I have it to the number pads. So, you want to click on there and then click your maximum access. So, this is going to be, um, this is going to be, uh, maximum access for the your is your right and minimum is left. So, right, left, right is six, left is four. And you're going to want to also turn it to relative controls, no. Um, if you have relative controls on, then it means that when you press it, it will always go in that direction. So make sure to have relative controls, no, selected. Um, you could, of course, uh, have this as a um, access chosen on a joystick, um, but I use a keyboard. Of course, you may be different, but as I say, this is really just a quick tutorial on it. Of course, you also have the pitch, and this is your up-down motion. So, 8 being uh, up and 2 being down. And again, turning relative control off. So, that's that's all you need to do, really, to get the, the, um, the buttons selected. Those are your main things. You need to make sure those buttons are selected. Uh, when you switch to your bomb mode, you can see that with the crosshair of your bomb, there is this little square in the middle of it. And that square is what you're going to be aiming with. So let's jump ahead in the video. Let's get some height. Let's get some altitude. This will take some time. So uh, we'll skip ahead a fair bit and uh, we'll come back to this in a moment. One eternity later. Okay, and we are back after several hours of climbing. Um, so 
first of all, you'll notice we are only at uh, about 9,000 feet, 10,000 feet, which is about the lower ceiling. You need to be around about 4,000 meters, 13,000 feet for this to work effectively. You need a bit of altitude for the Fritz X to actually get its um, its best operational use, although you're not going to generally get that in a general matchup. So, in the um, in the test flight, the best way to actually practice is on, say, the medium tank, because you can actually select it and you get a, a marker around it. You can't really see it from this height, of course. So what we're going to do is we're going to aim our bomb and we're going to try and drop it in the area, so away it goes. And now we can control it with our button. So as you can see, if we move it up, the bomb's going to go up, down, the bomb's going to go down, left, well, left, right. So we need to move the bomb up and to the right a little bit. We need to keep moving it up, 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 up. And as you can see, the bomb's going in, the bomb's going in. And you can see that the crosshairs are converging and the bomb lands right next to the tank. And that is a kill. So it's pretty simple to get used to, but you do want to practice a little bit. Now, the good thing about test flight is you can have the bomb rearm for you. So once you get to this altitude, you can practice a few times on a few different targets, of course. Not that you get many targets, I wish they would respawn targets for you, or give you at least naval targets to practice on in um, in test flight, give you the opportunity to actually test flight and, and practice on targets that you want to. Anyway, let's head to an actual battle and I'll show you how it's used in that respect. The Fritz X, uh, you, you're going to want to aim midship, you're going to want to aim for battleships. Um, that's the main thing you're going to want to aim for because they're slow moving, they're easy targets to hit and they're large targets to hit as well. The deck armour will also allow the bomb to uh, penetrate, um, but it won't penetrate too deep. Because what ideally you want to do is penetrate into a point where it's going to arm, go into the ship and actually explode inside the ship to cause maximum damage. And that's what the Fritz X used to do, and that's what it was used for in general. Um, most notably, um, of course, on the um, on the War Spite, it almost broke the ship in half when it hit just behind the uh, the smokestack the funnel. Um, the War Spite, of course, survived because the War Spite was like the uh, Vondertan in the fact that it was basically impossible to kill. Um, the Fritz X didn't really have much success in combat. Uh, it only sank the Roma, uh, the battleship Roma, um, in actual combat. So it only had one official sinking. Although it did, you know, it did cause a lot of damage to a lot of other ships. And the hospital ships Newfoundland and Saralino, as well as destroyer HMS Janus, were, uh, and light cruiser Spartan and Anzio, were possible for its ex um, targets candidates um, but they were sunk by the much more successful Henschel HS293 uh, which hopefully we will get in the game at some stage the Henschel HS293 is actually a rocket propelled uh, anti-ship missile um, it's a bit like a doodlebug um, it's like a Fritz X with a, a rocket engine basically um, and it was much more successful uh, over the Fritz X. But the Fritz X did have its place and did do well. Towards the end of the war, the Allies were making a considerable effort to actually start jamming the Fritz X from working, which it had some success, at, some success at. And I do wonder if we will get that in the game um, once they get towards uh, ships. Well, once they get towards... Well, I mean, you could see it on um, cruisers. Um, some of the later war cruisers and things like that with electronic countermeasures on them. Okay, so we'll switch which to play over here. And as we can see, we're just trying to work out where we're going for. And we can see there's a battleship over there. We can see there's a battleship there. And we can see there's a smaller ship there. Trying to work out if that's a destroyer or, of course, a um, cruiser. Because in naval realistic battle, this is all you can see. You don't get target... Um, you don't get the target information, you can only use the eyeball to actually work out what you're fighting against. So we're going to work out what's what. 
and you can generally tell what's what just by looking at them. You can sort of tell what a heavy cruiser and what a uh, battleship is because battleships are quite distinctive because they are, are early dreadnoughts. You can see right there that that is probably a light cruiser or a destroyer at this altitude and we are desperately trying to gain altitude as well. So we're just going to fast forward a little bit here. Um, but you can see what we're going to aim at is the ship over to our left there. Um, and that's our, that, that's the ship we're aiming at. I'm just trying to see if I can actually work out what it is. Um, end of plan. Where are you? Uh, the, set, the Setsu, the Japanese Dreadnought. That's what we're going to aim at there. So, we're coming in for our bomb run. So what we want to do is straighten up. Now you have to be careful of anti-air. So as I said, don't go for cruisers because they will cause you issue. Height-wise, we're not an ideal height. So we're going to want to aim our bomb manually midship. So as you can see, we're getting buffeted around a bit. But we release the bomb. And as you can see, uh, as you saw just then, it just came out. So the bomb is away. And we're going to want to aim midship. As I said, we want to try and aim between the smokestacks. And that's going to be the most... Uh, effective sort of place because we should set off a detonation of those targets as you can see our targeting we've got it pretty much spot on so we watch the bomb here comes in comes in comes in bang direct hit directly in the middle and that is the end of that dreadnought um, we've managed to, to sink it so that is basically it for your um, Princess. So that's sort of how it works basically, is you, you just got to aim properly and get it working. As I said, try to avoid things like um, like cruisers, uh, you mainly want to go for dreadnoughts. Let's just head to the hangar quickly and just talk over the aiming position of the Fritz X on the dreadnoughts. Um, so if we look at the uh, Let's look at, say, the Japanese Dreadnought, the um, Setsu that we just sunk. Um, so, as you can see, it is a very, very big Dreadnought. Uh, Armour-wise, it's got a fair amount of armour on it. Deck armour, 19mm. However, you've also got the armour of the Citadel underneath it as well. Um, so, you know, it, it is very heavily armoured. And that's what you want to aim at, is the heavily armoured. Don't aim for turrets, uh, because you'll generally find the game bugs out a little bit for them. But aiming midship is a good way of doing it, because you're generally going to snap the um, snap the, the back of the boat uh, and cause the, um, I can't remember the name of it now, the keel, the keel to break on it. And that's what you want to aim for. But if you aim midship, if we just look at the x-ray here, you're going to generally hit around this area and that's going to take out the engines, coal bunker, fuel tanks and also ammunition because despite these segments being sort of um, cornered off with bulkheads and things like that, the explosive mass of the Fritz X is large enough to cause a lot of damage inside the internal ship. The fact it has a, a small amount of TNT, well sorry, Amtol, doesn't mean it, it's necessarily bad, you just need to actually penetrate and once it's penetrated that's where it's going to do the damage. Now the other thing as well that doesn't work in-game is unfortunately the pressure wave from a Fritz X just missing. Because another valid option would be to land a Fritz X say right here next to the ship, have it sink a little bit and go off around right here. Because if we look at the armour of the ship you can see that the armour only really goes down to around about here. Um, which is just below the waterline which of course is, is where the ship is vulnerable from, from shells. Um, so when the bomb actually sinks to around about here, when it goes off, then it's going to go off in and damage the coal bunker, but also set off the magazines, and that should cause an explosion. Unfortunately, War Thunder doesn't, uh, doesn't work like that, and uh, it doesn't really count into the fact of the water pressure waves causing damage. Um, most of the damage caused from Fritz X's were actually just because near misses. Uh, I think on War Spike, she got hit one hit, one bomb penetrated, penetrated six, uh, six decks I think it was before exploding in the boilers and that's what almost snapped her in half. Um, however there were two other bombs that were near misses and they landed uh, a good 10-20 feet away 
but the pressure wave from the explosion caused mass, huge amounts of damage to the ship's, um, to the ship's, uh, ship's structure. And that's the main thing, you have to work on the structure, but it doesn't really work in War Thunder, so you need to aim directly for the ship. So if we look at the uh, Huyong, um, um, which is a slightly more modern, uh, well, slightly less modern, actually, um, slightly more modern design for the for Dreadnought, you know, it's got a lot of guns. Uh, again, if you look at the placement of the, the guns and everything like that, and the ammunition, if you aim between the smokestacks, if you aim between the funnels, you are going to set off the ammunition stowage as well as destroy the boilers and really just break the keel of the ship. So it's all about aiming for those parts. As I said, if you aim between smokestacks, generally that's going to be the most successful. Um, the Ekoma, which is a battle cruiser, of course, again, between smokestacks going to get the engines, you're not really going to get the ammunition so much in this ship because of the, the way it's designed, because it is a battle cruiser, it only has the two guns either side. So you may want to aim slightly forwards of that and actually aim for the um, aim for the conning tower, sort of the front, um, the front section of the ship, or maybe just the front uh, section of the smokestack, just behind the gun here. And as you can see, if you get that point there, then you're going to set off the torpedoes at least, and the ammunition, and that should be a one-hit kill. As I said, you need to set the fuse as well. Make sure your fuse is set to about one second. Um, that will give you enough time to actually penetrate and cause issue. Um, battle cruisers can be a little bit more difficult because they are a little bit thinner on their armour. Um, so you just have to be a little bit considerate of that. Because, as I said, if the, sh if the bomb actually penetrates too deep and goes underneath the ship, the pressure waves don't seem to work and you will just have issues. But again, when you've got a ship with the um, the side-by-side the -side turret set up, which is most of these dreadnoughts of this era, other than the American and the Japanese, um, if you aim midship sort of towards the funnel, or just midship in general, as you can see, you've got three sets of funnels here. So aim between the funnels, aim between the two guns here, and that's going to set off the... Um, the magazines for the uh, Y and Z turret, I think it is, I can never remember the turret names, um, but the, the wing turrets basically. Uh, when you come to things like HMS Dreadnought and Colossus, um, let's just look at Colossus for instance, again you can see single. Uh, you've got twin smokestacks, um, one of the issues is you do have a little bit of um, objects in the way in the form of boats that shouldn't set off the fuse uh, but it is war thunder so sometimes these things can happen deck armor again is not really thick enough to stop a fritz x from penetrating um, and if you do get in these areas you are going to set off these magazines so it should be a one hit kill uh, every time jumping to russia now um, the imperialista maria uh, one of the the, the trickier battleships because it is just very chunky and one of the issues with this ship is because of the, the way the actual turrets are placed it's not that easy to penetrate with a Fritz X because the turrets have got a fair amount of armour on top of them 125 millimeters to be precise and as I said sometimes the um, War Thunder doesn't work very well in that respect so you won't penetrate so again, if you aim towards the funnel and just go through the smokestack, if you just go for this smokestack here, then you should penetrate and set off the ammunition for the midship and then again cause it to break. But you're going to have to aim more towards the funnel, um, possibly aim more towards the front of the ship, aim towards the actual um, the, the superstructure at the front here. Um, but again, you do want to aim more at the deck. Uh, if you're if you're pretty if you're pretty confident with it, then aim slightly to the side here because it does have quite a, a large side section where there isn't a turret on board, of course, because it is centerline turrets. So if you aim to the side here, you are going to go through and then penetrate into the coal bunkers, and then that should set everything off. Um, next up, if we just look at the Pol Poltava. Um, Again, similar in its design, centerline gun turrets. So again, 
aiming for the smokestack is a good option. Um, of course, famously, the Stuka pilots for destroying the uh, Russian battleships would drop their um, Satan bombs, their 1,000... 1,000, 1,500 kilogram bombs uh, directly down the smokestack, so directly down the chimney of the ship, and that would pretty much render it inoperable. So again, you can do a similar thing with this one, and I apologise for the noise in the background, we are just pulling in some bins in the garden. Uh, Germany, of course, you've got the Vondertan. Um, so the Vondertan, very similar again, Aim between the smokestacks, so aim around about here if you can. Um, as you can see, that's going to go straight into the magazines and that's going to cause a huge explosion and that should wipe the shit out, sh ship out pretty easily, not the ship, the ship. Um, 25mm of armour, you know, again, it's got some fairly decent armour plating and the Citadel does have some armour on it as well. Um, but. <sighs> Why must people choose to do things when I'm recording? Um, but it will penetrate and it should go through without too much issue. When you come to things like the uh, Nassau sort of style class, the uh, Westphalen and the Haugland, um as you can see, the way it's set up, the guns are set up so you have the smokestacks in the middle. If, again, if you aim for the... Uh, Aim for the chimneys, aim for the smokestacks, you should go through. You're probably going to want to aim towards the end of either smokestacks. Don't aim for the middle, aim for the uh, front or rear. And again, then you should set off the ammunition. It's all about setting off the ammunition, though. And again, once you penetrate, you should do some good damage. For the American ships, you've got the North Dakota. And I think that's it at the moment, isn't it? It's just the North Dakota in there. Um, so with the North Dakota... Again, centerline armament, but you can see armor-wise, the actual ship has not got too much armor through the smokestacks here, which can be an issue because you can over-penetrate. So with this ship, what I recommend is actually aiming towards the back, so aiming between these two turrets here, uh, and that's going to give you the best chance of getting your Fritz X to actually go off, and also go off in the machinery area, as well as setting off the ammunition. Um, so I hope you found this kind of useful, um, give it a like uh, if you have, and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to, um, and yeah, I hope this has helped you out, if it, if it has, let me know in the comments, any questions let me know, I'll try and answer them, uh, other than that, have a good day, best of luck with your hunting out there, and I hope your, uh, I hope your Fritz X's come up good, I hope that you, uh, your aim is true, I hope that this guide helps you destroy lots of battleships and gives you a good day. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. No idea of how fun naval gameplay is here, you can see even sped up, it's boring as that shit. So much RNG and luck as well.